I'm pretty sure I just saw one. Really? Yeah, it looked like a tiny Loch Ness monster. Um, it should pop back up. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? The edge oh, of the water. Yeah, you see him? Texas is one of the most recognizable states in the South Central U.S. As the second largest state, Texas is known for its festive culture as well as its beautiful natural landscapes. Due to its close proximity to Mexico, Texas plays host to some creatures that are seen almost nowhere else in the United States. Well, it was business that brought us to the Lone Star State, with some free time between meetings and new birds to be found, we were excited to get out and see some new species. When reports of a least grebe came through eBird, we headed out to try to find it. Hey everybody, we're here in Texas, and we're on our way to a pond where a least grebe was seen. And this is probably our one shot at seeing a least grebe. So I've got quite a bit of adrenaline going because I've been wanting to see one of these for a while because they look adorable. Yeah, like it's just that small part of Texas. When we arrived, we discovered the park had already closed for the day and there was no way to search for the grebe. We left feeling like we had missed possibly our only chance to find this Mexican and South Texas species. However, a day later we found other reports of least grebes just south of our destination for the day, Austin. So we're back looking for that least grebe. We got a new spot that's closer to Austin. And it looks like one lady has been going keeping tabs on these four least grebes. She hasn't been there in a few days, but hopefully we'll Are get to report them today. I don't know. I hope so. They'd be even smaller it's than the regular least grebe. So hopefully we can find them. Zero minutes to grebe, apparently. Because hmm. we're here. Well, I don't see it. I hope this isn't another one of your wild grebe chases. <laughs> With two small ponds representing our search area, we were optimistic that if the grebes were there, we would be able to find them. It didn't take long for Derek to spot something. I'm pretty sure I just saw one. Really? Yeah, it looked like a tiny Loch Ness monster. Um, it should pop back up. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? The edge oh, of the water. Yeah, you see them? Yeah. That's gotta be them, right? They're tiny. Well, the pond is loaded with lee screams. It's so awesome. We're gonna head to the other side for some better lighting. I can't believe how many there are. I know, they're <laughs> like everywhere. It's crazy. All right, here are the lee screams. I wanna give you an idea of size. Um, one of them is right here. There's a couple right here. And then there's an adult over here. Like they are just tiny. Coming in between a quarter and a half of a pound in between 8.3 and 10.6 inches is the smallest member of the grebe family, the least grebe. Common in the tropics of Central America and the Caribbean, the least grebe is only found in the United States and Southern Texas. They're at home in shallow, small ponds or ditches with lots of weeds and feed mostly on insects and small animals. Adept at living in aquatic environments, they have been known to be capable of hiding their whole body underwater with only their bills showing above the water's surface. Adults are metallic gray-brown with a dark bill, white fluffy feathers toward their rear, and bright yellow eyes. Least grebes are monogamous and nest near the water's edge. Their babies, or grebettes, have striped heads and often ride on the backs of the parents. All of the little baby grebes just hop down the back of one of the parent grebes and that's how they kind of transport them around and keep them safe. And it looks hilarious because the babies just come up and then they kind of just nestle in the downy feathers on the back of the adults. How excited are you right now? I'm so jacked. This is probably one of the coolest things we've ever seen. After observing the grebes for a while, we turned our attention to other birds around the pond, including a green heron, black-bellied whistling ducks, and a southern version of a familiar eastern bird. So I was watching the grebes from this side, and then over here I heard a weird call. And at first I thought it might be a mockingbird, but it didn't sound quite like that. And I'm pretty sure it was a black-crested titmouse. 
I'm gonna see if I can get a better view. The black-crested titmouse is found in northeastern Mexico and in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. They are similar in appearance to the tufted titmouse, and the two species have been known to hybridize where their ranges overlap. The black-crested titmouse can be identified by its black crest, white forehead, light-colored stomach with gray-black wings, and peach sides. Their diet consists mostly of insects and seeds, and they can be found in a variety of habitats including scrub forests and on bird feeders in towns. Black-crested titmice are cavity nesters and can have one to two broods per year. We continue to round the pond, locating an eastern Phoebe, black vulture, and Buick's wren, in addition to some interesting plants and reptiles. This is an arid plant I found on the ground. I don't exactly know the genus or species, but I know I've seen them at the domes before and they kind of just cling on to trees. And uh, I think they filter a lot of things out of the air. They don't require much water to live. Pretty cool. This is crazy. We were just walking around the grebe ponds and we found there was a big water snake and then we saw this little guy too. I'm not entirely sure uh, what type he is, but like everything feels new for us here in Texas. I'm pretty sure he musked me, <laughs> but he's awesome. See you, buddy. <laughs> you said they're ridiculous lizards? I said they're pretty big. Oh, pretty big. Let's take a peek. You like your yeah? No. Oh yeah. What do you mean you don't see them? Those are cool. I know, right? Eventually, we came upon a trail where we had an encounter with a mammal that has become a southwestern icon, the armadillo. We just saw a group of armadillos. I don't know what a group of armadillos is called, but there's three of them foraging, and they just got right up to us because I'm pretty sure they're basically blind animals, and they function on, I guess, smell and hearing. But <laughs> they got right up to us. It was really cool. We finally saw some live ones after seeing a lot dead on the road. The nine-banded armadillo is the only armadillo species found in the United States. The word armadillo means little armored one in Spanish, and despite its name, the nine-banded armadillo can actually have between seven and eleven bands on its body. Native to the southeastern United States, this creature prefers wet climates but is expanding northward in range. When startled, they have a tendency to jump straight up in the air, causing them to be hit by cars even when the car would normally straddle them. The nine-banded armadillo feeds mostly on invertebrates but also consumes small animals and plant material. They sometimes get a bad reputation because they're the only animal other than humans that can contract leprosy, but the transmission of leprosy from armadillos to humans is rare. With time running short, we headed back to the car, feeling great about our finds. What a great stop with the grebes and the whistling duck, some of the reptiles, armadillos. Unfortunately, we gotta go because we have a meeting. I wish we could stay longer. It was amazing to see the tiny least grebes with their offspring, as well as other birds around these ponds. It was extremely fun to view some plants, animals, and habitats that were new to us. We thoroughly enjoyed exploring this dry, arid land, as well as our time with the smallest grebe species in the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. That's a place that women would take profile pictures on their Tinder. I think you're correct. Them. Lizards, snakes. What more could you ask for? Some cooler weather. Okay, well we can't have it all all the time. This is a classic bird type thing. You look all over the place and then they're in the back of an industrial park in a tiny pond. I think this is a middle school. That's a middle school? Yeah. Bye, Greaves and Whistling Duck. <laughs>